Hello and welcome to Inside Fingal, the podcast that gives you an insight into the work being done by the councillors and staff of Fingal County Council to make Fingal a better place to live, work, visit and do business in. My name is Jerry McDermott, I'm the Media and Communications Manager here at Fingal County Council and I hope you'll stay with me as we continue to inform you about the work of your local authority. Well, one of the things that Fingal County Council is firmly focused on is enhancing the digital economy and supporting communities to take advantage of a digitally enabled society. I have in my hand a copy of the Fingal Digital Strategy 2020 to 2023, and sitting across from me is Fingal County Council's Digital Programme Officer, Ashling Highland. You're very welcome to the Inside Fingal podcast, Ashling. Thanks, Jerry. It's great to have you here. And uh, before we start talking about the Fingal Digital Strategy and a few other things, can you tell me what a digital programme officer is? Because if I'm right in saying, uh, until you came along a few years ago, the position didn't exist within Fingal County Council. Yeah, that's right. Um, I suppose a, a digital programme officer, they manage digital projects and initiatives. So within my role, I manage the actions and deliverables of the Fingal Digital Strategy. And I would work um, closely with multiple departments within the council, but also external agencies and um, semi-state company, uh, semi-state agencies as well to deliver the objectives of the digital strategy. And I suppose the fact that such a position has been created shows how seriously uh, councils are taking the whole area of digital. Yeah, it really shows how important digital is for uh, Fingal County Council and I suppose it emphasises the importance of digital projects and initiatives for the county in in general uh, and to support them. So everything from uh, digital community initiatives to digital infrastructure, improving our broadband connectivity, our public Wi-Fi, all of the, you know, things that I suppose we essentially need in a 21st century life. Yes, and, and, and as you say, people will be very interested in hearing about all those things, and we will come to them during the course of our, our conversation. But I mentioned the digital strategy at the beginning uh, of our conversation, and you were heavily involved in its development. And I was wondering, why was it felt that there was a need for such a plan? Yeah, I suppose, well, Fingo has always been um, to the forefront of, of digital. Um, we were one of the, we were the first um, local authority in the country but the, the first uh, Fingal County Council had the first open data uh, site in the whole of Ireland so we've always put I suppose digital to the front and centre I suppose creating a, a digital strategy really creates um, a strategic vision for the council so it sets quite an ambitious targets and without that plan I suppose we would still be doing some digital initiatives but I, I doubt it to the to the extent that we're doing it now. So really that strategy gives us a, a clear direction and path um, to, I suppose, drive some of those really key uh, projects and initiatives for the county. And, and just looking through the uh, digital strategy, it, it states that the fundamental goal of the strategy is to maximise the opportunities of digital transformation for the benefit of our society and our economy. How are you doing that? Everything from encouraging businesses to avail of the the Leo's uh, trading online voucher schemes and getting getting more businesses online, giving more access to to skills and services for local businesses. That's just one example. And then for communities, I suppose the likes of uh, improving digital services in our local libraries and our community centres. So that they're just two, I suppose, areas where we're encouraging businesses and communities to reap the rewards of a digitally enabled society and then in the infrastructure side it's kind of future proofing the county with fiber broadband capability and public wi-fi so um i suppose there's lots of different ways where we are trying to uh, support citizens in reaping the rewards of um digital and, and, and I suppose that's the one thing that just strikes me. It's, it's, it's not just about the council and the council's own digital programme and that sort of thing. Like, it's, it's very much the county. Um, is, is there a lot of co- consultation with, you know, businesses and, and citizens about what they're looking for and, and what they want? Yeah, in, in the, I suppose in the evolution of the digital strategy, we had 
a robust uh, stakeholder engagement plan. So we, we went out, and it was pre-COVID, so we went out to events, Flavours of Fingal, had surveys, created a strategic issues paper, and um, had about a two- to three-month period of engagement with different community groups, the PPN, to get their feedback on what's, I suppose, what's the, the, the most important aspects of the digital strategy for them. Um, so there were different sorts of feedback that we're, we're getting from either local businesses, community groups, or citizens at the, at the event. Um, and we fed all of that into our strategic document and are now, I suppose, halfway through that and getting, getting into some really interesting projects. There are 48 actions within the strategy. Um, how are they going? Yeah, the, they're going well. Um, I would say that we are definitely exceeding the targets that we had set. So with those 48 actions, we have, I'd say, about 80% complete at the moment. Um, it, I would call it a working document. So the digital strategy, I suppose, with, even within those 48 actions, we've we have about four or five more on top of that now. So digital is something that always changes, technology changes, the way in which people expect, you know, public consultation, uh, delivery of services. It's always evolving and enhancing. So, um, yeah, we are, we're definitely on, on course to deliver the digital strategy and uh, more than we had said we would. Which is great to hear. And, and you mentioned there that it is an evolving document, but the one thing that is, that is um, I suppose, stationary in that are the four key pillars uh, on which it's built, and they're digital infrastructure, digital business, digital community, and digital government. Can we talk about what you're trying to achieve under each of those pillars, say, starting with digital infrastructure? Yeah, um, digital infrastructure, we are, I suppose, we're focused on improving the digital infrastructure for the county. So that's everything from facilitating the rollout of the National Broadband Plan. Um, So that's delivering fibre broadband to mainly the rural um, areas of Fingal. They are called the state intervention areas or the amber area of the uh, National Broadband Plan. So the council's job there, I suppose, is to facilitate that rollout with um, NBI, National Broadband Ireland. That's one of the, I I suppose, a key project or objective uh, within the digital infrastructure pillar. Also to increase the availability of wireless services in the county. So one of the, one of the main strategic projects last year and still ongoing this year is um, the rollout of the Wi-Fi for EU project. And that's now seen a delivery of, it's almost 40 outdoor public access points, uh, public Wi-Fi access points in 18 locations across the county. So now if you're in Main Street and Swords, you can get on to public Wi-Fi while you're waiting for your bus or while you're at the castle having a coffee. And that's, I suppose, replicated throughout Fingal in different towns and villages. Um, So, yeah, I suppose for infrastructure, that's they would be the key, the key areas where we were looking to improve um, access to connectivity. Uh, Another area as well is the rollout of kind of smart city infrastructure so that's the likes of your your smart benches your smart bins and they really give a I suppose for the council they give information back so the likes of the smart bins they would give information back to the council to let them know okay this bin is full now you should go and pick it up rather than um, teams of of people going around picking up bins that aren't full so it's improving the services within the local authority um, and that's the idea of the smart um, smart public realm assets uh, that they actually give back to the way we deliver services. You, you explained what a, a smart bin was there but a smart bench uh, I'm sure there's a few people scratching their heads <laughs> wondering what that is. Yeah I suppose the smart bench we were looking at benches and okay how can we improve a bench that it does more than just provide seating. So this uh, smart bench has a solar panel. Uh, it can give you access. It's a public Wi-Fi hotspot. So it gives you access to public Wi-Fi. You can also charge your device on it. So 
if you have one of the newer phones, I think you can charge wirelessly on the side panel, but it also has a USB port. So if you're waiting on a bus and you have your phone charger in your bag, you just pop it in and you're able to charge your phone while you wait for the bus. So um, it's just simple um, additional tech to improve a service. So obviously a seat is a seat, but can a seat be more than a seat? Yeah, so. yeah. Fantastic. Um, I suppose it won't be long before it's making a cup of tea and coffee and that as well. <laughs> that would be handy, yeah. <laughs> and and the, the public Wi-Fi, like you were saying there, there, there's various parts of the county and, you know, there's, the public have access to Wi-Fi there. Has there been much of a take-up to it um, since, since it's been introduced? There's been a really big take-up of the public Wi-Fi. Um, I suppose what's great about the Wi-Fi for EU initiative, it is... There's no ads or any, you know, disruption to the services. It's a high speed public Wi-Fi network that you just, if you're in the area where the network is, you'll see it pop up on your, it, when you click onto your, your Wi-Fi symbol on your phone and you just connect, you just literally click on and press connect and you, you're good to go. Like there's no, just a lot of public Wi-Fi networks have, you know, loads of ads and uh, sign up, you know, username, passwords, all of this stuff. Where um, the Wi-Fi for You network is, uh, it's a seamless connectivity that is replicated across Europe. So if you have, if you're in France and you're in a Wi-Fi for You uh, hotspot zone, you have the same experience if you're in Swords and Main Street here. Right. So, right. so, so from what you're saying, it's, it seems to me that it's it's a Wi-Fi system with no catches on it. Yeah, 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 and it, it's it's purely for to to uh, enable people in Europe to access free high speed Wi Fi without any interruptions. That's fantastic. You, you mentioned the national broadband plan, and um, like obviously, you, you know, Fingal has rural areas and and and. Um, where Wi-Fi isn't probably as good as it is in, in the more urban areas and that. How, how is the, um, the the project going? Like, are, are we going to get 100% broadband coverage in Fingal? Uh, yes, we are. So um, within the National Broadband Plan area, that's that state intervention area that I mentioned earlier. And um, in Fingal, I think we have just slightly over 7,500 premises in, within that area and all of those will be covered by the National Broadband Plan. Uh, they will be able to order a fibre line uh, to their home once they are passed. Um, and at the moment, uh, at the current, I suppose, timelines for delivery of the project, um, national people go on, can go on to National Broadband Ireland and type in their air code to find out exactly for their household um, for their premises, when will they receive, when would they be able to order their, their fibre so I would recommend people to go on to nbi.ie and, and find out exactly the precise date which, I mean, it's, it's useful to be able to find that out and in Fingal, at the moment um, we're doing the, the build, we're in the build phase of the National Broadband Plan in Skerries and that whole Skerries deployment area. So that takes in Balbriggan as well and a couple of different rural um, suburbs of uh, Skerries and Balbriggan. And we're also in the build um, phase of, they call it the Dumboyne Clonee deployment area. So that takes in the likes of St. Margaret's and Tyrrellstown, that kind of Dublin 15 area. Uh, so they're underway and connections will be available in some of those areas by June of this year. So you'll, we'll start seeing premises being able to order fibre that have never been able to before. So it's a really crucial plan and um, I suppose the council is supporting it and facilitating the rollout to make it as speedy as, as possible. And, and of course, you mentioned business there, and, and business is another one of the pillars. Digital business. What is that all about? Like, it's it's obviously about much more than just getting broadband to businesses. Digital business is um, is about, I suppose, encouraging businesses to take the opportunities of digital. So everything from upskilling and getting their business online to getting the fiber as well, the connectivity, um, and then. I suppose in, in other areas, we're looking at um, supporting entrepreneurs 
through the likes of our enterprise centres and access to um, hot desks and uh, remote working facilities, these remote working hubs, which you might have heard of. Um, there's the Connected Hubs Initiative, a national network of uh, remote working hubs across Ireland, and Fingal is playing a key part in that, in the delivery of uh, co-working spaces not only in our enterprise centres, um, but also in community centres as well. We've we've four community centres now signed up for the Connected Hubs initiative, delivering um, high speed uh, Wi Fi and hot desks to people in in Fingal. Right, and and I, I don't want to put you on the spot in case you don't know, but uh, th- where are those four community centres? Yeah, they are. Uh, there's Lutterstown, Applewood. Tyrrellstown and Fingolim Rogers Community Centres. They're all the the BCP community centres and they're trialling this uh, Connected Hubs hot desk facilities at the moment. And how's that trial going? Well, we launched last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think we had a couple of people sign up for a desk so far. Um, so it's early days, but uh, it's, it's kind of getting the word out to the communities now and to local residents to let them know that these um, facilities are available to book and you can just go on to the website and book a desk for a day for a week um, I think for the likes of you know coming up to exam periods it's going to be really important f- um, for students to be able to I suppose get out of the house and get into I suppose a space where you can have a quiet desk and get connectivity um, yeah I think they're going to be really useful and we'll see now how the pilot goes in the next couple of months Yeah, well, we keep our fingers crossed. All goes well there. Digital community. Uh, Again, I suppose from what you're just saying, you're touching a wee bit on the community thing. There's a lot of overlapping between the pillars. There's an awful lot of overlapping. Um, So one project might fit into three pillars. might have infrastructure, community and business. So, but yeah, we've got a number of projects and initiatives within the digital um, community pillar. Everything um, from the likes of Uh, digital services for our libraries so increasing the access to the online services um, increasing and enhancing those services uh, to enhancing the 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 wi-fi within the libraries we have little uh i suppose bookable hot desk um spaces within the libraries and we also have um maker spaces there's a big maker space now just gone into blanchestown library Um, So that's been a key, I suppose, key phase of the digital strategy to improve the access to services um, and facilities within within libraries. And what is a (laughs) makerspace? A makerspace, it it can involve tech and no tech. So a makerspace is a room where you can make things in. So that can be everything from, you could be sewing, um, you could be doing origami, so that's kind of like an, a non-tech um, example. But you could be, um, I suppose, coding a LED light to switch on on a jumper. So it's it's everything from arts and crafts to, um, you know, using a soldering iron and creating something that has a digital element that has a little little piece of tech in it yeah so one of those spaces where you're only limited by your imagination exactly and what we really provide is the the access to the tools and technology everything from 3d printer to to um you know to vinyl scanners um stuff that people might not have in their home so um we provide the room the space um access to some of this equipment and some expertise so the libraries have uh, a maker in residence who uh, can show people how to use this sort of equipment and give I suppose ideas and show what what has been created in the past. One one thought just struck me there while you were talking is that libraries um, which we always used to just associate with books have really become champions for the whole digital revolution. Yeah libraries are um, really the to the forefront of digital in the community um, they have they, they probably would have been one of the first to work first places for people to access a computer you know 
Um, so it's they're vital, I suppose. What can, what libraries have have done is they've really spearheaded the technology movement. So access to um, computers, laptops, different software that people might not have access to at home, and they've always done that. And I and personally, from my own point of view, BorrowBox is one of the greatest apps going um, because when you're going on holidays. You don't have to take a suitcase full of books. You just bring your um, tablet, in my case, and you've, you've all your books already on it. Yeah, it's, it really is a vital service, free service for people to access uh, a whole different range of everything from books to education services. So, um, yeah, our libraries have a, a wealth of facilities there, um, and digital is, is really to the fore. And then our final pillar is digital government. What's that about? Yeah, so the digital government pillar really takes in um, the digital services that the council provide. Um, so we're looking at everything there from the likes of internally our digital workplace program. So looking at um, moving the organisation to more of a, a digital organisation. So remote working. Uh, digital files, all of that stuff, and um, and then when we look to, I suppose, more external focused the di- the digital services that we provide, access to, uh, letting people have access to the data. So our open data site is really a strategic priority within that um, pillar. So we've just now launched. Um, a new version of our open data site and we are I suppose actively uh, encouraging all departments to release data as open data and this um, is something that I suppose takes strategic priority for our, for us yeah mm. and what does open data involve open data is um, a way for people to access freely access data that Uh, is in a machine readable format so the council publishes data in an open data format on uh, Fingal on the Fingal open data portal and this can be everything from um, the location of cycle um, bike stands to uh, location of public toilets and because this um, information is uh, published online um, is in machine readable formats Um, companies SMEs individuals researchers can access this information and uh, create anything from applications and um, enterprises based on this data so um, one example of that I suppose is the likes of um, bicycle data um, I've seen a number of apps that uh, tell you what what where your closest bike stand is, or where your where your closest uh, bleeper bike is, and that's all that's all um, I suppose developed on uh, open data. The council has a, an opportunity and uh, a goal to uh, deliver as much of its data onto the Fingal open data platform to encourage. I suppose, uh, that sort of enterprise and development within the county. We're currently halfway through the preparation of the Fingal Development Plan 2023 to 2029. How does the digital strategy align with the development plan? Yeah, um, the digital strategy, I suppose, feeds into the um, the infrastructure and utilities section of the development plan. There's a number of policies and objectives listed within the, um, the I suppose, the ICT pillar everything from um, looking at uh, fibre um, broadband within the county and policies around ducting and shared infrastructure. So some really important um, policy objectives for the next couple of years in the development plan, which will uh, future-proof the county's digital infrastructure. Um, th- so the digital strategy is mentioned, smart communities is mentioned, smart districts, um, and all of that really is feeding into um, the development plan as a whole. 
Yeah, you, you mentioned smart districts and smart communities, and, and that leads me on to, to something I came across called Smart Dublin and also Smart Balbriggan, um, which, which I know you're involved in and that. What are they? Yeah, well, Smart Dublin is an initiative of the four Dublin local authorities. And essentially, they are, um, they are uh, focused on developing and piloting initiatives, the Smart City initiatives, that look to solve local challenges. So the Smart Dublin team might work on, for instance, one of the the latest projects was uh, an EV strategy for the Dublin region. So they work closely with the four Dublin local authorities to help support that delivery of, um, I suppose, a strategic document, looking at where do we put in our EV, where do we plan to put in EV chargers over the next couple of years? And how can the council support that that delivery, that rollout? So that's just one example of how Smart Dublin are are, are working with the four Dublin local authorities. Um, but yeah, there's many examples, and one one others uh, is the the SBIR process. So that's been really significant over the last couple of years. That's the Smart Business Innovation Research Project. It's been a collaborative project with Enterprise Ireland, and a number of uh, projects were, were um, I suppose, trialled and tested in Fingal. Uh, one of those are, is the Unheard Voices um, that saw the development of a, an app for Fingal all around citizen engagement. Um, but yeah, so that's in a, in a nutshell, Smart Dublin work with the four Dublin local authorities on kind of smart city challenges. And um, one of their areas that they work on is um, smart this concept of smart districts and the smart districts I, I suppose are geolocated areas uh, where we trial and test in a small area specific projects and initiatives um, and I suppose trial and test them and so that we can scale them up either countywide or Dublin region wide. Is that where Smart Balbriggan comes in? Is that one of those smart communities, smart areas? Yeah, with a Smart Balbriggan is a smart Dublin district. It's obviously focused on the geo- geolocated area of Balbriggan. The, the idea behind it, the, the core theme of smart Balbriggan is focused around the community and um, I suppose supporting the community to specifically um, engage young people in digital and business in digital as well and enhance the public realm through digital. So there's lots of public realm projects going on at the moment within Balbriggan and um, this district is trying to I suppose bring digital within those so everything from uh, looking at installing air quality monitors um, footfall counters that Balbriggan would have been the first places to receive those smart benches and public wi-fi so that's we would have trialed it there and then brought it to other areas in the in the county and and just to link up what we were talking about earlier in regard to open data so you mentioned you know recording footfall and recording air quality monitoring and that public will be able to access the results of that through open data is that that how it all joins up yeah that's the principle of all of our smart city projects and um, especially within Belbriggan and um, every project is noted publicly on a public Trello board that's not open data but it's it's I suppose it's Again, it's that transparency piece to let people know exactly what's happening, when and where. Yeah, all of the outputs of those projects, if there are any data outputs, that they are going to be released as open data on the on the Fingal open data platform. You're certainly juggling a lot of balls in the air, Ashling. That's the one thing that strikes me from our conversation today. And before we, we started recording, you, you were telling me about uh, that you're involved in the Chief Executive's Innovation Fund as well. W- what exactly is that? Yeah, I suppose this feeds into that digital government um, pillar of the digital strategy. One of the the action areas is around encouraging um, innovation in the workplace and um, yeah I I would have set up the Chief Executive Innovation Fund um, and the idea of that fund it's it's, I suppose it's relatively small pot of money to try and encourage innovation in the workplace so. And that's within the Fingal County Council workplace? That is, yeah, yeah. So it's an internal fund for staff to put forward ideas um, that will support the delivery of services 
um, within the area that they work. Um, one good example, I suppose, of that, we only launched it last year and uh, one of the projects has been really successful. It's the um, Weather Stations for Schools project um, and that's been managed by our Environment Department. And the idea of that project is, um, I suppose, to encourage, uh, it's, it's for national schools. So a number of national schools have been put, were put forward, were chosen, um, then, you know, put their hands up and said they wanted to take part in the project once we did consultation. And um, essentially, they, it, it's an education and awareness, awareness piece about climate change and uh, the weather, but there's also an open data uh, aspect to that project as well. So these weather stations, they collect rainfall, rain, they've got a rain gauge on them, and that information gets put up on the Fingal Open Data site, but also it's aligned to Met Aaron's, um Open Data site as well. So kids get to learn a bit about open data, they get to learn a bit about climate change and the weather and how uh, to try and track rainfall as well. So it's been a really successful project and it's been rolled out to, I think, over 16 schools now in Fingal. Right, and, and I suppose for Met Erin too, it, it means more weather stations around, around the county and they get better information. Yeah, it's been really important, especially because we had a, a number of storms at the beginning of, of the year in February and the, the data that we were getting around rainfall was, was, I suppose, we didn't have that data before, so it's been really beneficial to them. Right, that, that sounds like a, a great initiative, uh, not only just the weather stations, but that whole Chief Executives Innovation Fund. Did, did you have a good response to it? Yeah, we had a really good response to it. Um, we put four, four projects forward for funding last year. Three of them are still underway, and uh, the one I just mentioned has yeah. been, I suppose, uh, that's more coming to a close. It's almost finished. Um, but yeah, we we had a really good response to it, and we're running it again this year for staff as well. Okay, well, listen, Ashling, thank you so much for for being our guest today on Inside Fingal and, and giving us what has been a fascinating insight into the work that you and your colleagues are doing to transform Fingal's digital landscape and support the development of, of smart communities. And I suppose that, at the end of the day, is helping to make Fingal a great place to live, work, visit, and do business in. Thanks again, Ashling. Thanks. So, that's it for episode 16 of Inside Fingal. My thanks again to Fingal's Digital Programme Officer, Ashling Highland, for talking to us about the pioneering work that she is doing. If you have any comments or suggestions in relation to the Inside Fingal podcast, please email podcast at fingal.ie. Remember, you can follow Fingal County Council on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and LinkedIn, and also at fingal.ie. Thank you for listening. Until the next time, goodbye and stay safe.